I think plastic surgeons have some advantages when it comes to trying to uh, advance new therapies and technologies like this. Uh, for one, we're taught to try to think outside of the box. We're not a dogmatic specialty where we're taught that things have to be done this exact way. We're taught to be problem solvers. We're taught to uh, look at what's missing uh, and see how we can reconstruct that to its most similar state. Uh, we are taught to try to do that by taking things from a person's own body, from where they may need it the least, to where they may need it the most. But we're also taught to, again, try to come up with new paradigms. And this may include taking tissue from, from somebody who's willing to donate it, uh, to give it to somebody who, um, who needs it. But we're also taught to operate on every single part of the body in plastic surgery. And we're taught to operate on just about every tissue type in plastic surgery. And when you're looking at a transplant like this, where you're operating on soft tissues and bones and blood vessels and nerves, and you have to know how to put all those things together in the appropriate way. Uh, we're one of the few specialties that, where, that has been taught to do all of those separate things all together. We're also taught to look more globally at how a person feels and, and functions, um, as opposed to just looking at a, say, an outcome test number. Um, and so I think all of these things give us an advantage in trying to assess a patient from a more holistic standpoint um, and come up with reconstructive algorithms that may provide them with new options that they haven't had before.